So we've heard from the international investors. You're on the inside. You're on, on the ground here uh, as an investor in Sri Lanka. Talk to me about your experience so far. Us as a company, yeah. um, we've uh, been looking at Sri Lanka since 2011. Uh, the chairman of our company was very keen to invest into the east coast or than the west of Sri Lanka. And we did invest, but we found that the travel, the infrastructure wasn't there. So we, we felt we couldn't get bums on beds, if you like, mm. so as to, to put it. So we actually sat on it up until about uh, 2014 when we started to relook at it. And um, the main issue, I think, is, is, is getting people from Colombo or the airport. And that's always been our, our, our issue. Mm. But um, I would say, invest in Sri Lanka. There's a lot of help around. Um, I find the tourist uh, SLDTA, um, BOI, very helpful. So for foreign investors, um, I, I think they can get a lot of support there. But we are currently, uh, our chairman's in Sri Lanka, and he's quite a visionary guy. So he can stand somewhere and say, look, this is what I want. And he just say, just go and buy it. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so we've invested into a few properties now. And uh, we start constructing uh, our first property, we start uh, next year of Feb March, mm -hmm. aiming to complete in 2018, last quarter. But that, to me, that's been the only issue. Uh, I have no problems in Sri Lanka. Seriously, I, you know, there's no bridge that we, you know, we can cross every bridge we come across. That's the way I feel. Um, and the harder it is, the better for us because we are the only ones who get across that bridge. Absolutely. Uh, Ray, in Asia Leisure, you're working with foreign partners as well. Correct. Uh, uh, how do you sell Sri Lanka to foreign investors? Uh, it's not difficult, to be honest, uh, because we are in the game of real estate. End of the day, it's a, it's a hotel, it could be a resort. So when you're looking at talking to an investor or a potential partner, you are giving them the idea of buying into something that you can touch and feel. Mm. Um, you know, you, you, you take them out to the site. They've already done their study about the country. If they're already looking at Sri Lanka, they've done their research. They know why they're here. They, they obviously can see the potential. So once they come in, what you actually want to show them is, yes, in the last five to six years, the amount of work that has been done by the government, uh, the infrastructure development that has happened. Um, what we concentrate on is areas that the infrastructure is already developed. If you look at where our hotels are right now, it's um, starting from just south of Colombo right down to Gaul. And that comes with the Southern Expressway, um, the, the airport down south, etc. cetera. Um, also, going back to the whole real estate game of it, if you've got infrastructure development into the real estate that you're investing in, your real estate is going to appreciate a lot faster. Mm. So those are some areas that we focus on. Uh, in terms of uh, having a strong partnership with, with our foreign investors, it's, I guess it's about track record. Um, once you've you know, worked on a project that is maybe valued two to three million dollars, you make it come to life, you build a track record. And today we're working on projects valued at 50 to 60 million dollars, not just in Sri Lanka and in Maldives as well. Mm. Uh, Roshan, with your company as well, I mean, it's inherently Sri Lankan. So in terms of what, is, what you've seen as growth in the country, how would you describe it? Well, we, we, saw, we saw in the earlier session uh, some very interesting uh, statistics that was put out. Uh, that itself, it's uh, proved that uh, how we were driven uh, coming into uh, the sector, because we are more into... Uh, gas and energy, mm. and a company that moved into hospitality about three years ago. And we're now moving in the direction of having the third property coming up in Sri Lanka. Uh, we're quite positive about it. And also, the advantage of uh, having the, the, the development that has been taking place in the recent past, the last 
two or three years. If you look at the, it was very encouraging the, the previous presentation, 13 to 16 growth is what we would uh, uh, ride on or mm. we would uh, uh, trade on. And uh, we are confident that it will grow further. And there were areas of concern that was addressed uh, by various individuals. Of course, those concerns uh, are some are uh, very important uh, for an investor, especially with regard to the infrastructure development, uh, whether the rates, the rev bars and ADRs spoken about uh, are static or whether there are variables and up and downs. Yes, I mean, this industry is, 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 is uh, a sensitive industry. You will have those uh, uh, short uh, issues that you may come across, but uh, the positive side of it is what we saw. So basically, it's on similar lines that we are moving ahead. Uh, we haven't gone into uh, looking into any, we have invested on our own uh, in all of these two properties that we have now. The third one is a fairly bigger one, so we are looking at a, a possible investor coming in with us. And at the moment, we are in discussion, and what we are uh, talking to them is also on similar lines. One of the interesting things that I've heard from uh, other uh, investors here is uh, while there has been a concerted push by the government to really generate investment, local and foreign, in Sri Lanka, I mean, they've, they've got the, you know, the board of investors, uh, they've got the uh, SLTDA, they've got the, uh, 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 where they have that one-stop one one stop, one one stop stop shop. shop. One stop shop, yeah. um, but what is the, the challenge that they've often faced is that it's not doesn't seeming it doesn't seem to be streamlined. Uh, it's confusing and the lack of communication as to what kind of um, investments are given priority, um, where you can actually uh, get a stamp of approval, and how you would do so for to get your projects underway, um, and criteria as well is not exactly what, something that is uh, etched in stone. What have you found in terms of your experiences? My experience has been pretty good. Yeah. Um, like I said, when we bought this property in 2011, we went to the SLDTA um, for outline planning. I got that outline planning in about a month, less than five weeks. But you just have to push your way all the time. You want something, you've got to go and get it. Mm. So uh, we don't sit back. I would ring them every day if I had to. I'll sit in their office if I had to. But we will get it done. Do you feel that you need to do that? Do you, should you feel that if there is such a concerted effort to get the industry, uh, the, the leisure and tourism industry uh, up there amongst the rest in, in uh, the region, that you should have to do that? I guess uh, for us, it's been mixed. We've We've had uh, very good experiences with the authorities um, to get our approvals, to get things going, and we've also had some very tough, um, tough times as well. But if you actually look at, you know, for the last 30, 40 years, uh, we haven't had this development pool. Yeah. It's new to us. It's new to the industry. It's new to the government. It's, it's new to all the approving bodies and, on how to move at this pace. Um, you know, all of a sudden you've got requests to build 30, 40 story skyscrapers in Colombo. I mean, we haven't had that for a while, so how do we deal with it? Um, so I guess a little bit of patience from the investor's point of view as well. I mean, we, you are investing into, um, into something, uh, into an area that is new. And you're expecting a little bit of a high return than investing into a, into a market that is stabilized and processes are streamlined. So, you kind of know that when you're getting into it, and I have to agree with uh, you, you, you need to push your way in uh, and, and not just you know, wait, wait for things to come back, come, come to you when you're going forward. What kind of responsibility do you feel you have in, um, in helping this vision grow, the vision of the country now to, um, to be up there amongst the rest, the best tourism destinations in the world? If I may add a, a, a bit Please. to the previous uh, discussion, with regard to SLTDA one-stop BOI, one-stop is part of SLTDA. Yeah. BOI is the investment promoter in Sri Lanka, the, the legal body. 
once your project is approved preliminary by the tourist board or SLTDA, it will go through the rest of the processes. And there are connected organizations that you will have to deal with. And uh, they facilitate all those processes. I've handled maybe 10, 12 projects myself. Uh, this system is much easier than what was before. As uh, Ryan said, uh, so many projects are going through the same process. So there can be delays wherever you do it. But the processes are getting even better now. And once the uh, one-stop shop gets the details, they will distribute it. You may have to present your project in two or three occasions uh, in uh, different areas. Probably, I mean, if you're investing in Colombo, it's very different. But if you're going into the regions, in the region, and then if you have your uh, documentation done proper, you won't have that much of issues in getting your approvals. But if you don't, then you will have to, you know, there's a process of correct. I mean, I'm sure this is the same anywhere in the world. Mm. You know, there are certain guidelines. We are a responsible country doing responsible business, especially in tourism. Certain things we are very concerned, our history, our culture, uh, the community. So those are things that uh, will be taken care of by various bodies connected. I do understand there are people who don't value the real investment or they don't understand what it is. So that is the area that, uh, uh, that you need to push a little bit. But overall, uh, the, the process is getting smoother and what we are doing, our uh, industry in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan hoteliers and the professionals involved in, the, in, in SLTDA, together with the officials, what we are trying to do is to make it easier for you all to invest in Sri Lanka. And if there are any areas that, uh, uh, that we could be of any assistance, the industry, mm. now, I mean, they can always talk to the hotel association. There's a tourist hotel association, which is a very strong body in Sri Lanka. The chairman is here with us today. So, I mean, these are agencies who will help assist you if there is any issue of uh, getting your approval. So it's not as bad as it sounds. And uh, yeah. Just going back to that question about the responsibility that you have in helping the vision grow. Yes, Monica, I, I believe, uh, I mean, I lived abroad for 40 years um, back in Sri Lanka now. And we have to bring the experiences that we've had in, in the UK where I lived and try and inculcate um, better practices, quicker practices. You know, we, we have to educate, we have to teach sometimes to get things done. So I feel it's part of my responsibility uh, to get Sri Lanka up there with the rest of them. Yeah. And I just can't look at myself. I have to look at the whole process and I have to try and help that process. Um, and we do that. You know, we, we will talk to anybody and say, look, this doesn't work, right? You need to try and do, do it differently. So I feel that, that us being here, being Sri Lankan, that, um, that, that we should try and help this process, that we should try and help them to streamline their processes. And as you say, yes, we shouldn't have to sit and wait. You know? And that's something we keep talking about all the time. But till that happens, we have to make it happen. Mm. You know, and we've, as a company, taken the responsibility of, um, of what we are going to do, basically. So we're looking at flying people to the East Coast. You know, we're looking at all the infrastructure stuff. Our aviation expert comes in on Thursday so we, so we can discuss how we can get people from A to B quickly. Um, we have to take responsibility. And we, as a company, are willing to do that. So we will, you know, we will talk to the relevant authorities and say, look, your system clearly doesn't satisfy the international market, mm. right? It might satisfy the Sri Lankan market where they're prepared to wait a week uh, and let them get on with it. But it doesn't satisfy the international market. Mm. So we have to educate. But what are the strategies that you put in place uh, when you are looking to uh, invest in areas within the country? I think mainly it's the, it's the real estate return. What we look at, and also, you know, nobody wants to invest into a hotel and and sit on it for a lifetime. 
Uh, what are our exit options in five years? What do we look at in seven years' time? Uh, how, how, how's the stock market? Is, it, is listing an option? That is, that is basically our exit strategy. When we're, when we're investing into um, the initial things we look at is uh, the infrastructure, availability of um, talent, can we find staff to work in these hotels? That has been a major issue that we've been yeah. hearing from uh, others as well in terms of uh, labor here in the country. Why is that? Why is there this, this uh, lack of labor? I guess there are those who want to work elsewhere. Uh, historically, I think uh, these two gentlemen might be able to help me out. We, uh, hospitality industry has been a very good industry for us, for our people to work in culturally. Um, since the conflict, most of the best, best talent moved away to the Middle East, uh, to Europe, to, to Maldives. Uh, I think bringing them back is not going to be easy. Uh, I think what we need to concentrate now, personally, what I think is actually uh, taking in hospitality studies or tourism studies into the schools, into higher education, uh, and investing into the infrastructure uh, of talent development for, for the industry. If not. Uh, I see this as our biggest biggest challenge in the in the near future. Mm. Or attracting labor from abroad. Yes, that possibility is also there, but there are there are efforts taken by besides the government, the Ceylon Hotel School, there are private international schools that has come to Sri Lanka in the last two years. Uh, they have started uh, a business in Sri Lanka. A positive side is that, and then there are uh, areas that uh, at vocational level the people are trained but having having all this is not good enough as Ryan said that you need to get uh, our professionals with back in Maldives uh, in the Gulf back to Sri Lanka how do you do it basically match the pay nothing else nobody would come uh, because you're coming back uh, home I mean few might do but uh, you got to match the pay so can you do it I is the question so some are doing it now and, and attracting uh, uh, good people to come back who, who has been working for brands in, in, in a good brands so that you can set your standards high. When we, start, when we started in Pasikuda, we did that. We managed to recruit, uh, get back some of our staff who were in uh, Dubai and Maldives back. We, we had to pay them uh, the same package mm. and get them down and then set the, set the standards at the highest level uh, because, I mean, we were talking about uh, a little while ago about the standards. I mean, if you don't do that, uh, uh, it will be difficult uh, to start up and then, you know, maintain and also when the, when the international hotel chains come and uh, we being uh, a homegrown business to match the quality and then that's come back to the revenue management discussion that took place uh, when you have a 75% uh, plus rooms in Colombo, what is going to happen? Yes, if you, if you maintain your standards, refurbish on time, you will have uh, the occupancy and of course how you sell it also matters. Mm. Uh, importantly, uh, your, your human resources uh, play a major role. So the only way is uh, salary because today the younger people have different other options. You know, in Sri Lanka they look at uh, the telecom businesses doing extremely well, uh, energy uh, doing well. Uh, renewable energy and energy doing very well. So the, the banking sector mm. is doing well. So these are very attractive areas for you to get in as a youngster uh, than hospitality, sadly. So we have to make it uh, more attractive uh, for people to take it. And uh, how do we do it is, uh, I mean, there are different ways. Uh, you can, people get attracted to newer hotels, uh, bigger brands. Yes, but uh, also they come with the correct package so the local hoteliers us we will have to uh, it's a challenge and uh, we we would take it take what kind it. of a timeline are you looking at in terms of return or decent return profitable return on your investment that's a good question um, usually if you've got external investors uh, they would look at a five to seven year term but if we are investing our own money from our own company um, 10, 12 years is, is not so bad for us. Uh, we have the asset that's always growing. So um, we are pretty much a self-contained uh, company. Uh, we have other businesses, obviously, which, which support this in the UK. Um, so, but typically, if you, were, if you were an investor, you would be looking 
at maybe five to seven years. But if you're working with pension companies, they're looking at a longer term and a smaller, smaller return because the UK is about 1.68 at the moment for pension companies. So if you can offer something a little bit more and show them how that is achievable, um, it becomes, we become a very attractive proposition for, for them. But going back to what he was saying about bringing the staff, again, we've taken the onus ourselves. We will train. We are very lucky that we managed to get uh, JA, Hotels and Resorts, um, as our partner and um, uh, our operator uh, to look after our hotels. So they have a large bank of Sri Lankan workers there. And it's, it's crazy. Uh, every time I go to, to Dubai, they're like, when are you going to open? When can we come back? You know? So money is important. Um, and uh, as an industry, we must bring our associates to a decent level of, of living. Uh, currently, uh, personally, uh, I'm kind of, I feel sorry for the guys who are working there because their, their level is, is still a little bit too low. And I think you know, we can maybe change, change that uh, by getting the higher end tourists. You know, they're getting, so, you know, your remuneration is directly you know, affected by the quality of clients you bring. So we feel that if we bring the $400, $500 per night client, then we can, we can pay our associates the correct amount of money. And as, as an industry, we need to try to go up further and stop this cutting the prices and doing chopping prices. You know, we need to keep our standards up if we want for everyone. You know, it's, it's everyone's benefit. You know, uh, our associates are our first line. They are the ones who are, it's not me, it's them. We've got to keep them happy and smiling every day so that, um, you know, they go, it's a happy company. Hey, you know, look at those guys there. You know, and we are happy people. What kind of financing options do you see here in Sri Lanka? Mainly what I see is uh, foreign direct investment coming in. Uh, in terms of financing, yeah, the banks are uh, pretty good at lending. Yeah. Uh, and they also lend on, on, on dollar terms as well, not just, not just rupee. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a good aspect, um, I guess. Um, mainly at the moment what you would see coming in is foreign direct investment into into hotel uh, or real estate or hotel is that properties. a good thing for you as local investors uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing uh, however uh, you know ideally because um, local as local investors we we uh, most of us do earn in rupees so given the exchange rates uh, it's very difficult to keep up with the uh, FDI foreign direct investment that comes in um, but uh, I think historically, most of our uh, tourism investment has, has, has been foreign direct uh, investments. If you were to look at some of your final thoughts in terms of uh, what your overall goal is uh, for your companies, individual companies in Sri Lanka, and your vision for growth in the country, how would you, how would you quantify that and how would you describe it? Well, for Laos Leisure, our mission is uh, by 2020 to complete uh, the third resort. Uh, we feel that 2020 is the year that uh, most of this good work will, will pay much richer dividends. Uh, and also, we are looking at uh, outside Sri Lanka. Uh, Where? We're looking at Bangladesh. We have some investments there in energy. Uh, but since of late, we have been a little uh, pushed back due to various development. But we, we, we've gone through these, and these are temporary things that any country faces. And then we have uh, we continue to invest in Bangladesh, especially in energy, and we are looking at that area. Uh, in Sri Lanka, we have uh, have few uh, more properties that uh, can be developed. Uh, we would look at the next three years uh, in term growth in terms of. Uh, uh, not only REPA or EDR, but uh, arrivals, uh, which is very important uh, because at the moment the numbers are great, but when it comes to the length of stay shorter, mm. that's something that uh, is a concern. And uh, looking at all that, we would decide, but we also have uh, uh, land and property in 
Colombo as well. Uh, so it's a matter of uh, attracting uh, either investment or you work with your uh, fund or equity loans. Or there are other uh, uh, possibilities of funds, funds available overseas mm. that you can get for tourism, especially in Sri Lanka now, because everybody is looking at Sri Lanka very positively. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are reasons for it that, uh, that it's happening. And then uh, we would utilize that and, and uh, uh, responsibly and see whether we can, uh, because as, as my good friend said that, uh, you know, if you invest, uh, no borrowings, yes, your returns are between three to four years, three to five years, but if you debt plus equity, it will be five to seven years, and if it's uh, more into debt, mm. it will be much greater. So looking at all that, uh, we'll be careful in that area, but nevertheless, uh, very positively looking at uh, developing at least two more resorts there and after, uh, about five resorts, but uh, going into the non-traditional areas because we don't want to get uh, go into uh, let's let's look at you know the blue oceans uh, to to uh, develop our business rather than going into the same areas where our colleagues are developing i mean let them do that and we do something different all right well i wish you the best of luck all of you thank you very much for your time uh some very interesting uh points of discussion as well and uh i wish you continued success thank you very much